walking the wrong, unnatural way. I call it foot in front. Sometimes I'll call it the American walk because in my little limited experience, I've seen Americans do this more than other people, other countries. And it looks a little like this. It's foot in front, foot in front, foot in front, foot in front. I gave a class on this topic about 12 years ago to seniors. And I, I showed the American walk, the, the natural walk. I could do more in India and other native cultures. There's a shifting of weight. One foot, you fall forward, the leg lands under you. Very tall, elegant, poised, relaxed. So the, the American walk, again, is foot in front. Neither leg relaxes. The foot is gripping. The low back is tightening because as you come with the foot in front, it's like falling forward from the hip. So you have to tighten the diagonal back. It tightens the back down, this kind of walk. And Americans, for the most part, walk this way. And when I was teaching this class of seniors, after the class I was driving home, it was a week after 9-11, and the airplanes had stopped going to Europe because of 9-11. And they had an NPR interview where the reporter was talking to a French shopkeeper. And the French shopkeeper was saying, uh, no, I don't see any Americans because the planes aren't flying, but, but there's a lot of other people I see you know, on the street. There's Germans and Swiss and British and like that. And the NPR reporter, he got it. And he was silent for like 10 seconds because he was, he was thinking, he was realizing what was going on. He said, but, but, but how do you know there's no Americans walking outside your door? And she said, that's easy to tell an American how do you tell an American? It's all how they walk. How do they walk? Foot in front. It's all legs. So Americans identify themselves overseas by this walk, foot in front. We think it's so normal. Everybody does it. You look everywhere in America, everybody does this. Now, I have this walk because I was born and raised American. And when I'm not thinking, I go back to it because it's my habit, and it'll be the same for you. You can't just break a habit. You have to replace it over and over until it's settled. And that takes patience. So I can be walking my American way, then I would think, oh, that creates a little pain, and it does, right there. And my neck hurts a little right here, just by putting the foot like that. It's not natural. I think, oh, shift my weight. Become conscious of putting the foot in front. So I deliberately put the foot in front to become conscious of it. I say to myself, foot in front, foot in front. So I become aware of it, put the foot in front deliberately. Then, and now I can shift that. Now that I'm aware of it, I can back out and say, okay, I'm going to pay attention to the leg at the moment it takes weight. So instead of always thinking, foot in front, foot in front, foot in front, I think, take weight, take weight, take weight. And it looks like this. Take weight, push back, and there's a relaxation response because I've worked at it. Relaxation response. It's not perfect. I'm halfway there, maybe. Walking becomes very different. Standing tall. There's a lot of tricks that we can help ourselves with in walking. I'd like to cover a few of these. Uh, one of them is walking backwards. When you walk backwards, you Reverse all your bad habits. Head forward, if you walk back, you have to kind of look back and twist. And you... So the more you can walk backwards, the better your posture will be. Or run backwards, even better. It confuses the brain. You can, you can get these old habits reversed. It's something, that's something funny. Another good thing to do is hold on to something and walk without the eyes open. Close the eyes. So you sense, you, you can become aware of many more things, the foot taking weight, the sounds around you, where things are with the memory, thinking in three dimensions, get out of the eyes. The eyes will often make us tense because we're staring. So walking blindfolded, when I'm walking down the street, I'll sometimes be walking and I'll just close my eyes for three steps. I'm not gonna get hurt in three steps or four steps, close the eyes or I'll stand and walk backwards, just a couple steps. 
and then go back forward. When you walk backwards, it turns down the volume on all these habits of going forward the wrong way. See, ideally, walking should be like a martial artist who can move in any direction equally easily without any organization or change in the body. You can go forward, go back, you can go a little down, go up. It's not just only forward. So walking in America, there's another problem that happens is because the foot's in front. The eyes are a little little, uh, vigilant because we're compromising our balance. This is a very insane thing to do. The body says, this is not in your evolutionary history. None of our ancestors did this thing to put a foot in front. None of our ancestors, if you go to Google and you type skeleton of man walking, you're going to see a skeleton of a person walking, taking weight with a foot behind like this, standing tall, with the curves of the spine all straight and correct and nothing crimped. You see a current anatomical drawing of a man walking, Western American anatomy book, you'll see a picture of a skeleton with a foot in front. It's just accepted wisdom, so-called wisdom in America today, to think that walking is putting one foot in front of the other. And this is, this is not reasonable. If you think about it just for a second, putting a foot in front is a break to forward movement. It doesn't give you forward propulsion. So in order to go forward, you take weight with a foot, push your foot behind. And so when I'm walking, I'll just think of that. Shift weight, feel the moment of taking weight, push back. And then the walking becomes something very nice and easy. I enjoy it. And I get compliments on my walking. And then if I forget, and I'm stressed, I'll go back to the American way. Right away, my hip hurts. So that's the basic basic things on walking. The material presented here is for information only. It summarizes the main tools that I have personally used for about 25 years as a Feldenkrais teacher. I've worked with many clients with serious medical issues and other people, and I've found these ideas are safe and simple. They're effective, but common sense dictates that you need your doctor's permission. If you have any questions, if there's any pain, you shouldn't do a movement. You should always be gentle, go slowly. If you have any doubt about the safety of a movement, respect that and don't do it. You can see a professional teacher of movement, an Alexander or Feldenkrais teacher. These people are very good. They've studied posture for a lifetime. You can trust them and they can look at you and in a glance, they can tell you what is going on in your body and what you need to do particularly to help yourself. And this can save you many years of futile effort and struggling doing everything or trying to accomplish something you don't really need to accomplish in the way of posture. When you have a professional, experienced person looking at you and you follow their advice, it can save you lots of effort and time.